In the Evergreen State, art has no limits. And creating it is no small feat. In this field report, we look at an iconic piece of art that is, quite literally, larger than life. If you've flown into Seattle and had to wait for your luggage at SeaTac, chances are you've seen this vibrant artwork called Eyes on the World by Dick Elliott. And if you look close enough, you'll notice that those are industrial reflectors, just like the ones you see on bicycles, highways, and your neighbor's mailbox. Every single one designed to form a collective pattern that measures 6 by 20 feet. And if you think that's massive, it has an even bigger relative. Take a trip to Yakima and you'll find what's called the Circle of Light on the Yakima Valley Sun Dome, where 48,000 industrial reflectors adorn the ring of the dome, forming 24 different panels that catch the rays of the Yakma sunshine, giving the dome a glowing halo of light. Measuring a total of 880 feet, it's the largest piece of public art in the state. Every year, millions of people flock to the Yakima Sun Dome for different events, and of course, its most popular one, the Central Washington State Fair. It really is an honor for the Sun Dome to be the host of the largest piece of public art. Imagine it's been in place for over 30 years. Millions of guests who have come to State Fair Park for events have actually been able to experience the circle of life. But all year round, when the festivities are done, the circle of light remains to be a spectacle to behold. It was installed in the early 90s by the late Ellensburg-based artist Richard C. Elliott, also known as Dick Elliott, who was known for his iconic choice of medium. Janae Huber of the Washington Arts Commission tells us more. The reflectors, you know, there's sort of a technical component to the reflectors and how they actually function and how they catch the light and whether, you know, the distance is the right distance for viewing, whether the pattern is dynamic enough to um, have the effect that the artist wants it to have. Every four panels is inspired by um, a traditional Yakima basket pattern. Um, and then the other patterns are, are Dick's own. It's so much a part of the building itself and about what makes that building a really wonderful, magical space. 14 years after Elliot's death and after decades of wear and tear, the Circle of Light needed a refresh. To preserve the Circle of Light and Elliot's legacy, Artswa made it their mission to restore it. The difference in color between the old and the new is pretty astounding. Um, you can really see how um, the reflectors have faded in the sun over time. With the help of a contractor and $500,000 in legislative funding, plans for the restoration began to take shape, but not without a hitch. For one, the original manufacturer of Elliott's reflectors no longer made certain colors. So we needed custom batches of all of the other colors to have them and try to replicate as much of the shade, as close to the shade as Dick used in 1992. And many of these phone calls had to be done by Zoom. And then you can imagine Arts Wa had to work with companies overseas where these reflectors were made and subsequently, you know, had some delays getting them. Fast forward May of 2022, those reflectors were manufactured and finally arrived um, in, over in Seattle and were brought over here. And so the project started in June of this summer and was completed um, um, ahead of schedule and on budget, restoring this beautiful circle of light.
Good morning, everybody. Thank you for gathering with us today on this beautiful sunny Monday in Yakima at the Yakima Valley Sun Dome to celebrate the restoration of Dick Elliott's Circle of Life. In July of 2022, just a month after the restoration started, work on the Circle of Light was finally complete. With the new reflectors and an advanced adhesive technology, it's ready to shine for at least another 30 years. Today, Dick Elliott's work remains as evergreen as the state that shaped his legacy. And true to the touch of a visionary who chose a rather unique and unconventional medium, his work continues to prove what Washington creators have always believed. That art has no limits. One of the things about public art specifically is the way that it elevates our humanity. There's sort of a, a conversation that happens with public art and with a community, and it's less about, you know, do you like that specific artwork or don't you like that artwork? And it's more about the ways that artwork can enliven our public spaces. Ultimately, that's pointing to like our humanity um, and who we are as humans, the need to make things, the need to be in conversation with each other, um, and artwork really does that. For Field Report, this is Angela Nolasco.